Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring some crate openings and then after some Elbing gameplay. The first thing I did when this update released was buy a bunch of stuff from the store, mainly because it just seemed like a good price, especially the $100 for 54,000 doubloons. I do spend quite a bit on doubloons in this game and that's honestly just a really good deal especially since I can log in through my phone using mobile and basically there's no reason for me to miss out on collecting all of the calendar bonuses. So I know one of the things about these crates that most people don't actually enjoy is the fact that getting ships are quite RNG. A good thing that has come from the past updates is the fact that they have added a guarantee system so with these Mega Santa Crates, you can guarantee get a ship out of 30 crates if your RNG is that bad. So far, opening my 20 crates, I did receive a Wichita. And, well, here I just received the Algerie W, which, honestly, I was happy about since that ship does differ from the tech tree by having a main battery reload booster. So far, I have spent about 38,000 on these 20 mega crates and I just got two tier 7s and a tier 6 ship out of the crates. Adding up their doubloon value in the store it's actually at 47,500 doubloons which is actually more than I paid for in these 20 crates that I actually bought. My RNG in getting these two tier 7s and tier 6 has to what I would assume be the fact that I do have most of the tier 5s and also tier 6s so there really wasn't many ships for me to get out of the pool. I'm actually happy that I got the Algerie W out of the crate instead of say the Georgia W since that ship is basically a copy pasta. I was very pleased with purchasing those crates since I basically profited in the doubloon value just by getting those three ships. I also got a bunch of free crates which you see here and I got a bunch of tier 6s and both of those winter ships however they both don't have any differences compared to the regular premium ship so I most likely won't be playing them. Obviously everyone's experience when opening crates will be different and don't take my experience of obtaining a bunch of ships thinking that you will obtain the same amount of ships or doubloon value that I have. But I do know people enjoy those crate openings anyway. Moving on to the Elbing gameplay. This is a destroyer. Like I said, I've been waiting for for a very long time ever since they released it through the auction. This is one of the ships that honestly offer one of the most unique playstyles on both PC and now in Legends. Now the main reason why that I've been waiting for this ship and I'm extremely excited about it is because of the main guns. The ship has 150 millimeter main guns, however the AP penetration values are similar to that of the Hindenburg which is the PC tier 10 heavy cruiser for the German Navy and that German cruiser is a 203 millimeter cruiser. So having these 150 millimeter guns and having penetration values similar to that of the Hindenburg allows you to citadel cruisers at some pretty ridiculous ranges. Unfortunately, our Legends Destroyers are pretty much limited to about 10 kilometers, unless you slot some range mods or some commander skills that allow you to increase range, although doing so forces you to give up some pretty important inspirations or skills such as Twist and Track. Along with the Elbing's increased penetration values, it also has some increased penetration angles, meaning that some of the ships that are actually angled towards you, you can still penetrate its armor, which is why I was shooting AP at that destroyer when it was spotted, because if it had turned away and allowed my shells to arm, I would be dealing full penetration damage, which would be around 1300 damage per shell. Another great selling point of the Elbing is that the hull is 25 millimeters, at least in the midsection, so destroyers that shoot HE at you will most likely shatter on your broadside and they will not be able to deal damage unless they switch to AP. If you simply stay angled or you're kiting away and you're angled firing your back guns since they are both located on the rear, 
Most destroyers and some light cruisers will actually struggle to deal any sort of damage to you. If you do turn away, like I am trying to do here, you can use most of your guns while kiting away and mitigating damage. The enemy Hayate is shooting HE at my broadside, and as you can see, most of it is actually shattering and not actually dealing much damage. I do switch to AP as the Hayate turns away, and I do get a bunch of overpen still. I forgot to mention that this is actually my first game, so I was still trying to figure out where the angle is, where we can still get penetrations, and then get some full damage on destroyers using AP. After being shot at quite a bit by the enemy Hayate, I still have 27,000 HP because, well, this ship just has so much and, well, the armor just simply helped us there. I am going to fast forward here to save us on some time just so this video doesn't go too long. With the enemy destroyer dead and the enemy carrier spotted going after our friendly ships on the right flank, we are pretty much free to just harass the entire enemy team as long as the enemy carrier doesn't show up to spot us and then to allow the enemy team to shoot and also him to drop us. The monarch is just simply reversing and we do have a carrier that is dropping him so he will stay spotted. I smoke up and start shooting at his superstructure and you can see these improved pen angles and also the sheer amount of damage that these AP shells can do and also these guns being relatively accurate. We are able to deal quite a bit of damage in every salvo and we're just simply chunking his HP away. Now even though the Elbing is fairly decent at dealing damage to a bunch of different ships, there are still some weaknesses to this ship. One of the biggest weaknesses is the fact that this ship is so large. It is the biggest destroyer in the game, and it is almost as large as some cruisers. The HE DPM on the Elbing is also very bad, having an HE Alpha of 1800, which to put that into perspective is less than a ship like Fletcher that has an HE Alpha of 1900. The main battery reload is also fairly slow for a destroyer being at around 6 seconds after slotting the reload mod in the 4th slot and having Bay as your commander using Observant Rage. The ship being extremely large also forces it to have a very large turning radius and also a fairly sluggish rudder shift. The ship is fairly clumsy for a destroyer which is why you probably will find yourself eating torpedoes fairly often because the ship's handling is comparable to that of a light cruiser rather than a destroyer. The Elbing's torpedoes, even though they have quite a long range, are also very slow, so the slightest of adjustments from some ships will simply throw off your aim significantly. Here we see the poor turning radius in action, and any other destroyer, I'm pretty sure we would have made the turn there. Now this Mogami is turning broadside, and we do have AP loaded. I'm expecting a pretty big salvo considering that the shells hit extremely hard. I do get one citadel, but everything else just simply lands short, which is just simply really unfortunate. Not being able to citadel him much more there, especially considering Elbing's accuracy is pretty good. I think if those shells actually landed, he would have been dead here. Although, since they landed short and we only got one citadel on that first salvo, he is going to get away with quite a bit of HP. I do have my own tinfoil hat theories on why this does occur, although it's just that, tinfoil hat theories. I do want to try and stay away from creating all of these assumptions, especially because, well, if you assume you make an ass out of you and me, I think the main way forward is once we get training rooms, the entire player base just goes in there and tries to mess around, identifying as many bugs as possible and also showing that they are replicatable. Once we do that, then we can send that over to Wargaming and then they actually have a better idea of what's actually causing the issue. Although there are still a bunch of bugs that haven't been fixed from the game's release, such as Propulsion Mod making your ship reverse faster than normal so I don't have a hope that they will fix it quickly. We did do a bunch of damage to the Mogami though, even though we were only able to land two citadels. 
if our shells didn't land short and we did end up getting more mogami definitely would have died there now the enemy saipan is starting to come after us again and something i forgot to mention is that this ship does have access to a smoke generator and also defensive aa fire so if you ever find yourself being harassed by a carrier you do have ways to either shoot down planes or disengage using smoke and it is a fairly decent anti-air suite since the range of the AA guns is actually 6 kilometers. The Mogami makes the same mistake of sailing broadside to an Elbing and we do end up getting two more citadels and also kill him off. This is still a fairly close game so now I want to try and take advantage of sailing in the enemy cap and trying to delay their points and allow us to catch up since we are down on points even though we have the same amount of ships remaining. The Saipan returns and I do use my defensive AA fire. Whenever you do use the defensive AA fire I do find that it is relatively effective and well even though this is a Saipan I assume he most likely used his button to decrease the damage that his plane takes and as soon as it does run out, we simply shoot down the remaining number of planes that he had. Now that there is an enemy Edinburgh charging in to defend their cap, I do decide to start turning away. And just in case he does just simply get to charge in, I can stay angled away, mitigating his AP from penning my hull. And then also being able to fire most of my guns. The torpedoes that I launched preemptively for the enemy battleships that were pushing towards our cap does actually land on a battleship and I do get some additional damage. And unfortunately, now that our friendly cruiser has just yellowed into the cap and ended up dying, and also the enemy CV coming to spot us, I need to smoke up in order to not be spotted with a battleship in front of me and the Edinburgh behind me. If this CV was allowed to spot me, I would simply be focused and most likely killed off. Now all we can really do is wait for our friendly carrier to spot some of these enemy ships and also the enemy planes that will most likely be above us. I am concerned that the enemy Edinburgh is basically charging at my smoke with his sonar active so all I really can do at this point is just pay attention to the capture and then as soon as it gets contested that's when I know I need to start leaving because that's most likely when the Edinburgh will be getting close to my smoke screen. Unfortunately the Edinburgh gets into the cap at the same exact time that the Saipan does drop torpedoes in my smoke and well I do eat one. I still have about 13,000 hit points and all I really can do now is sail out of the smoke and towards the enemy battleship. The third enemy ship is coming in from our north spawn from that right side instead of going towards our cap. So now really our only opportunity to leave is by sailing straight at the enemy Flandre and trying to keep the smoke in between the Edinburgh being in between three ships and then also now the enemy carrier showing up I have to start shooting at something in order to get him off the board to increase my chances of surviving ideally I would have turned right to duck behind the island from the enemy Flandre however with that enemy Kansas coming in from that right side I simply don't have anywhere else to go so I just have to do my best to dodge the enemy Edinburgh's guns and make sure that his AP does not arm on my ship. I call target on the enemy Edinburgh and my team does actually shoot at him and they do a decent amount of damage. Now I do stop and start reversing towards the Edinburgh because now I am getting a little too close to the enemy Flandre which his secondaries will definitely cause a problem. The Edinburgh does turn his ship broadside to try and angle towards our friendly teammates and our pen angles are actually able to citadel the Edinburgh and we do get away although this enemy I said Flandre the La Fugra is still here and well he is on a low enough HP that we can put a couple of salvos of our AP into his broadside and kill him off. Now we have the enemy Kansas on the other side of this island and we do not have our torpedoes yet so we aren't actually able to try and YOLO him and well 
the enemy Saipan returns once again and all I really can do is try to reverse away and not get spotted, although at this point it is inevitable. With the recent nerf to the Saipan and increasing the arming time of torpedoes, I decide to start moving forward because I am hoping that I can hit one of the torpedoes before it arms, which I do there, and now my torpedoes are reloaded. I have 1400 HP, 4 kills, and I do need one more kill for a Kraken. With the enemy Saipan having a full squadron, I really have no choice but to try and YOLO the Kansas in order to try and death strike him and also trade, which I actually do end up doing, getting a death strike on the Kansas and also getting a Kraken. Even if I didn't end up death striking him, we were up by enough points that if I simply died, we still would have been up and there just wasn't enough time for the enemy team to actually do anything. This was my first game in Standard Battle that I have played this update, the first game in the Elbing, and well, it was a Kraken. So you can pretty much say that I've had some pretty good RNG at the beginning of this update with all the crates that I've opened and also getting a Kraken in my first game. 154,000 damage and 3100 base XP, just a very good start all around. After this game, I am extremely excited to have the Elbing and continue playing it in the future. And based on the amount of fun that I had in this game, even though we were being harassed by an enemy carrier, I would say that this ship, even going against the carrier, can be extremely fun. Going into my build, I do use Iric Bay on pretty much all of my German destroyers mainly so I can double stack Concealment Inspirations and then have Sims as the third, Bay's base trait, and then Swirsky for double Concealment and then obviously Sims as the Inspiration allows you to have excellent Concealment and great survivability, which is honestly one of the reasons why I really enjoy playing the German Destroyers and also the Pan-European Destroyers since you do use Swirsky as your commander and then you can stack Bay as your inspiration with Sims, having the same exact effect. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more, or leave a comment down below for other ships you want to see in the future, including those that I just got in the Santa Crates. But until next time, aloha.